pray. We're ready to begin with Auburn. We'll ask Coach Pearl for some general thoughts on the game. Then we'll take your questions for the two student athletes. And then we'll uh, finish up with Coach Pearl. So, Coach, would you begin? You know, start off by congratulating Missouri. Um, those guys had won three out of the last four games. They had stayed engaged. And they were a good enough basketball team to, to beat the 22nd ranked team in the country. That's a credit to Conzo Martin, his coaching staff, and the character of that team. Um, I didn't start off caring for Jordan Geist very much when he first started competing against him. He was sort of one of those players that if he was on your team, you'd love him, but if he was on the other team, you, he bothered you. Um, I want to congratulate him on a great career. Um, and then I think... Uh, when you see the combination of Geist and then Watson, you see sort of the torch being passed from some, you know, per year and Geist. Those guys beat us in here a couple years ago, and uh, and uh, but now they've got some young players that torch is going to be passed. And I just want to congratulate these two seniors, you know, for getting their first SEC tournament win. Uh, it had been three years uh, without a without a tournament win, so that was a big win for them. And I think the players were definitely. Uh, thought about those guys and, and making sure that we got one. All right, we'll take your questions for Bryce Brown and Horace Spencer. If you'll uh, raise your hand, we'll get uh, one of the floor microphones to you. And let's just start right on the front on the aisle. Bryce, uh, no points in the first half and then 17 in the second half. Just what was your mindset coming out of the locker room and what changed for you in the second half? Um, I just got to thank my teammates. They do an unbelievable job of just supporting me no matter if I'm if I missed 10 or made 10, um, they, they have the same feeling and the same confidence in me no matter what. So um, that's just kudos to them. And, um, and um, me as a leader, I just got to, you know, my last year, my last, could possibly be my last um, tournament SEC game, and I just got to keep on shooting, um, just trying to help my team win. Um, a couple times I tried to pad it a few extra times, but um, threw me out my rhythm. But as long as I'm catching and sticking, and, um, that's kind of what coach wants me to do. So I just continue to do that. Yeah. Other questions for either the student athletes? Let's go to the front on the right. Horace, uh, talk about your game tonight. You had four steals and uh, you know four blocks, and then the double double. And without Austin Wiley, I mean your production is super important. But talk about how you played. I mean, my focus is really on defense. You know, the ball just came to me. It just came to me the way it did. I wasn't really focused on my offense. I was really just focused on helping my my guards get through them ball screens and just trying to protect the paint, be a presence in the paint, and just take care of defense off of defense really. Raise your hand if you have another question. Let's go to the far right in the back. Go ahead. For Bryce, uh, what really were they doing in that first half to try to mess with you know your game? And obviously, Jared struggled as well. It looked like they were maybe picking you guys up you know deeper in the court. What were they doing to mess with the half court offense? Um, nothing that I couldn't handle or me and Jared couldn't handle. Um, it just came down to making shots. And um, I feel like that's what we did in the second half, just made shots. Um, First half, you know, they I felt like they came out strong trying to run me off the line a little bit, but that's nothing I haven't seen all season long and it wasn't nothing I wasn't prepared for. So it just came down to making shots and um and um, you know, just having wanting to go out strong. Any question in the middle on the aisle? Go ahead. This is for Horace and Bryce. I mean you guys have been around for a long time, got your first SEC tournament win. What what's the feeling like to finally get a W here? Horace. It feels really good to get a first win SEC tournament, you know. We just wanted to come here get one win, move on to the next one, get another win, just keep going, you know, just it feels good. It helped me, me and Bryce getting this first win. My team right now, we're in a really good spot. You know, we, we have really good chemistry. And um, we're going to keep that going um, throughout the tournament. Um, yeah, it just it definitely felt good getting our first SEC win. Um, took me four years, my fourth, my, actually my fourth year. So, um, um, like I said, I just got to give everything to my teammates. Coach trusted me with the ball. Um, um, and my teammates trust me, and um, you know me and Horace are going to do everything we can to make sure this this team um, doesn't doesn't go out on a sad note. And we just want to end our senior season on a strong note. Yeah. Got time for one more question? Anyone for either of the student athletes? All right, we'll excuse you, and you can return to the locker room. We'll continue on with Coach Pearl. Raise your hand if you have a question, and we'll get a floor mic to you. Let's start right down on the front on the right. Coach uh, Pearl, talk about the minutes you got from Malik Dunbar, uh, double figures, uh, four for six from the floor, uh, some good defense as well, a lot of energy. Yeah, I think if you uh, 
if you look at our, our stat sheet, you know, we had nine guys in double digit minutes. We had four guys score in double digits. Um, Malik has been, he's just been super patient. He works hard, he's a physical presence. Um, he'd like to do more, but he, but, but he knows when he forces the issue sometimes, gets himself into some troubled situations. And I agree with you, I thought he was just patient. Um, and uh, that, that attitude, that effort, that unselfishness, it's just contagious. Our guys see him being locked in, handling the moment, and contributing. Um, it's, a, it's impressive. We have a question in the middle aisle. Go ahead. With Chuma only getting four first half minutes, I mean, what did you see from the D'Angelo Purifoy minutes that you got there? Well, D'Angelo played um, maybe 17, uh, 16 minutes in the first half. He played a lot. Um, the fact that he was in shape to be able to play that many minutes, the fact that his teammates trusted him to be able to be out there. Um, and uh, then the second half, he made a big shot um, um, that really you know, uh, uh, made a difference. He had a really nice slip, made some good passes. Um, we're best when everybody contributes, and I think that's the, that's the, the danger of our team. Uh, we have typically, we, this might be the first big game we've won where, Bryce, where Jared Harper didn't have to carry us. Um, Missouri did a good job defensively on both Bryce and Jared. Um, and uh, a lot of pressure on Jared to run my club and my biggest communicator defensively. He's, he's a leader and um, it just didn't have, it was, just was a little off tonight. Missouri had something to do with that. The fact that we could win without him was, without him having a big game was huge. All right, question on the front down the left. Bruce, you said the torch might be passed to Watson for Missouri. What have you seen from his film the last couple games that really stick out to you? He's fearless. He's got, he's got guts. He's, he, he sees it. He can shoot. He's got good size. Uh, those, those young freshmen were highly recruited kids, and they're going to they're gonna fit in. They've gotten better. You know, Coach, uh, Coach Martin, he's got a great staff. And, um, you know, they've got, uh, they got, uh, they got some really good guards coming back. Question in the front, in the middle. Moving ahead to South Carolina, you saw them in January. What do you remember about that matchup? Um, Frank Martin's got my number, not just my phone number, but my number. You know, um, I think he's won like let's say three out of the last five, maybe or something along those lines. What they do defensively bothers us. They extend, it makes it hard to run your stuff. Um, the overplay, they're physical, they're tough. Um, Silva. Is, is, is a major factor. How, they, how, how the officials referee him is huge because he's so active, athletic, bouncy. Um, he gets himself into some foul trouble and, and uh, he draws a lot of fouls, just draws a lot of, a lot of contact in that situation. So, um, you know, I remember we had a chance when we went to South Carolina, had a, had a couple last possessions, but they, they, they got the better of us. Another question in the middle. Oh, go ahead. Austin Wiley was, you know, has been back out there this week. Looked like he may be available. What was the plan with him, and what's his availability for the rest of the tournament? Austin had his first contact practice this week, and so, um, you know, he uh, he's getting closer. Um, but the I thought Anthony and Horace, at this time of the year, here right now, um, are playing well together playing well, complimenting each other. And so uh, I think that uh, uh, Austin is just, he's getting closer to being available. Right now, Anthony and Horace are doing a nice job. Another question for Coach Pearl. Let's go to the far back. What's your thoughts on Horace's uh, impact when he came in tonight as a spark plug? Well, just, what, just that, your energy, uh, offensive rebounding, physicality, toughness, courage, um, you know, he just, he knows who he is. He had some big plays, made his free throws. Um, I mean, blocks and steals and just, he's so athletic and, and uh, um, experienced. So really, really happy for Horace. We don't win without him. Raise your hand if you have another question for Coach Pearl. <laughs> okay, let's come back down to the front. Coach, with the bigs they have, including Silva, would, would tomorrow be a day you might need Wiley? Well, we've needed Wiley all year. Um, not to, it's a good question. I, you know, I'm, 
don't mean to be glib, um, if that's the right word. You guys are all writers. I don't know if that fits. Um, sure, we do. Um, but we need Austin. If, if yesterday was his first contact practice, how would he be out there in the SEC tournament against Silva when he's been out for four weeks? That's tough, right? So Horace and Anthony right now are playing and rotation has been good. But, yeah, we miss, we miss a healthy Austin Wiley. A healthy Austin Wiley would be dominating out there. He's as good as any center in the league. But not only getting healthy is having your first contact practice, it's actually having several practices so that you can get a little timing. It's tough, tough in March to ask him to. We have time for one more question. We'll take it down on the front right. Hey, Coach, I know you're uh, very proud of the recovery Anthony McLemore's made to the, from the injury of a year ago, but talk about how much work he's put in the gym because now he's a, a legit threat. He seems to make threes at big times. He, he made a couple tonight. It, it's uh, If you talk to coaches that prepare for us, it's one of the most difficult things to prepare is a shooting five man. And um, sometimes you just got to kind of give him some shots and hope he doesn't make them. I think the other thing about Anthony, though, is he, he's got abilities – um, outside of that, his defense, ability to block shots. Um, he is, um, he, he, he's, um, it, it takes a while to recover from such a horrific injury. The fact that he's played every game for us this year is a testament to his toughness. Um, but I think there's still another level that he will, he has, and we may not see it till next year. Thank you.